The Office of the Political Ombudsman recently conducted a review of the September 2020 general election campaign that was held during a global pandemic. Now, as they approached their 20th anniversary, they consulted with a wide cross-section of key stakeholders after the campaign using a formal review process to gather information and to discuss future approaches. Today, we are joined by the Honorable Donna Parchment Brown, Political Ombudsman, and Mr. David Salmon of Pari, which is the Political Awareness and Respect Initiative, to discuss the findings, recommendations, and how these findings can help future election campaigns. Honorable Donna Parchment Brown, our Ombudsman, welcome to Mellow TV. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to be here on Mellow TV, reaching your viewers at home and abroad. We are indeed delighted to have you as well. How did the review come about and what was the objective of conducting such a research and review? A combination of factors. In 2019, we hosted the Commonwealth Secretariat for a series of consultations and they shared with us that across the Commonwealth, a good practice of campaign reviews was developing. So post-election in a number of countries. We thought that was quite interesting. And then when our elections were called in 2020, uh, we observed a few things which really pushed us to go ahead and do this. First of all, the voter turnout was the lowest ever for a national election. So that was a cause of concern and some discussion all across the country. Secondly, it was conducted in the context of a global pandemic, which we're really feeling here in Jamaica. And thirdly, there was a great use now of social and traditional media as against mass meetings to send the message out to the public. So for these different reasons, we thought it was time to gather people who are interested in democracy, people who may be looking on to talk about what had happened. You also asked me, you know, what was the objective? So I could go into that. Certainly. And um, so we wanted to learn what had worked well, what did not work well, and what might have escalated to create problems. Did the political ombudsman's office operate effectively during the period? And what, if any, changes would people like to see to campaigning in Jamaica? And uh, we found that the selected participants, there were some enthusiastic persons, about 50 in all, and we administered questionnaires, we did poll questions, and we had three discussion forums as well as a number of elite interviews with experts. Thank you so much for that. Now, who are the groups that participated? Well, I'm happy to say we had people from academia, civil society, including faith-based groups, PARI, the Political Awareness and Respect Initiative, and other youth groups, Jamaica Constabulary Force Liaison Officers, who work with the Office of the Ombudsman, people who are members of organizations who are part of the Election Center, which I co-chair with the Director of Elections, and happily, representatives of the two political parties that contested the election. So it was quite a diverse gathering. Now, how was the review conducted? So we had a process where people were invited and sent a questionnaire, which they were to complete before coming to their different engagements. We broke the uh, people into three different groups. Mainly, we had the JCF liaison officers in one group. We had the young people, PARI and other young people in another group. And we had the other stakeholders from academia, civil society, and so on in a third group. Then we had about eight or 10 persons who we did special interviews with. These were persons who had developed a reputation for understanding politics, good governance, and the rule of law, or who were in media and so had a lot of knowledge. And really, I learned a lot from all of the people mentioned. Indeed, a wide cross-section of persons made a contribution. Now, what are the major findings that came out of this review process? So I think the first thing I should say is the participants don't feel that Jamaica is all doom and gloom. They feel that we have done fairly well. Uh, we have built on some of the problems and institutions that have come in since the 1980s. We've built and tried to resolve our problems, and we've come a long way. 
However, they feel that we're not where we need to be and that more work needs to be done. And certainly, I was heartened to hear them say more work by the political ombudsman's office to carry forward the gains. So some of the specific findings about the campaign included recognition that we were not using mass meetings. We were more using digital and uh, traditional media. And the result of that was there were less utterances in the public space that may have breached the code of conduct. Although on social media, there was a lot of vitriol. We also recognized that the breaches of the Disaster Risk Management Act were plentiful. Despite the fact that this was a law brought in for the public safety, that although there were not mass meetings, there were smaller meetings and gatherings where the guidelines and the laws were not being complied with. And it was felt that if the political parties had engaged the marshals, that they had promised to help them with their public engagements, that would have been better addressed. Mark you, it was noted that some candidates handed out masks, you know, and spoke about adherence to the rules. Where the code of conduct is concerned, the findings were that there were significant breaches. Uh, some 66% of the participants were aware of breaches having been committed. They were concerned that there was far too much of vote buying and vote selling and to some extent in some settings it had been normalized they were against it but they felt that there were many people who thought it was normal now so that was a big concern the f finding also was that there were not many violent confrontations there were small skirmishes between people but there was far more of people getting together like we have a lovely picture of two people on a bike one in a green shirt, one in an orange shirt, both happily going, and many mixed groups of people of the two political parties together. Uh, however, they felt that there were other concerns. The political ombudsman, they felt, did not get the support in the public space that was required uh, from leaders, so that the leaders and the ombudsman were speaking with one voice in relation to the various breaches. So those were some of the findings. Yes, and also out of the findings came the fact that youth stakeholders want more policy discussions, detailed manifestos, yes. and less rhetoric from political candidates. Yes, that was quite interesting for us because we know that the dubs and some of the other things are an aspect of the politics, and they're not being criticized because they bring the vibe. But what the young people and some of the adult participants were saying, we need more than vibe. We need concrete information. So they thought there was a weakness in the manifestos in that they came out late. They were concerned that the debates also were done late and that there were no constituency manifestos or report cards to help guide voters. So essentially, we continue to be voting more for the party on national issues rather than for the candidates on the plans for the constituencies. Thank you for that. Now, out of the review process came major recommendations. Let's talk about these recommendations. Well, there are a number of recommendations. I'll summarize maybe the four, uh, you know, four important ones. But just to say that the recommendations were given under three headings for the political parties, for the political ombudsman, and for legislation or the parliament. So uh, one of the things that people felt very strongly is that the ombudsman needs to collaborate more with the political parties on matters such as civic education. They think civic education for young people and adults is a very important ongoing need for a democratic uh, experiment that we're upon. They also form the view that the Political Ombudsman's Commission requires some more authority, often called colloquially teeth. The authority would come from legislation. So for example, by changing the Political Ombudsman's Act to allow the Ombudsman to make reports to the Director of Public Prosecutions, to make the Code of Conduct legislation so that penalties and sanctions could be applied for breaches rather than moral suasion and recommendations to the party leaders as now obtains. They also felt it was important to uh, join forces with 
other stakeholders for ongoing exchanges and discourses that would benefit democracy. Thank you. Now, with this information that has been received from this process, what will the Office of the Political Ombudsman now do with the recommendations? Well, it was so full and frank, and we are feeling fairly affirmed, but also noting that people think there are other things we need to do, like our digital face is not adequate, the use of that space to communicate and also to monitor those things that may breach the code. So there are some of those concerns that came to us and we're looking at that. But the plan of action is to continue to work with the Political Awareness and Respect Initiative, political parties and other stakeholders to carry forward the recommendations, specifically within the next 30 days. I intend to develop legislative briefs, which I will share with the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition and my hope is that from this they will be able to create a cabinet submission that would lead to the amendment of legislation that's been suggested in the consultation. And you were very good today to bring along copies of the review and the report. What are we looking at at this time? So we're looking at the report, which is some 30-odd pages, and it has quite a lot of information in it, and it's very attractive. And I think anybody who would page through it and get a lot of good information that's credible and that's reliable, even though it's not scientific, it comes from focus groups and experts. But we thought that for some people, as a ready reference, they might want the pullout, which is primarily the recommendations, because there are some 30-odd recommendations across the political parties, the political ombudsman and legislation. So this is the easy read. And this is the more detailed document. Thank you so much for sharing with us. What do young people think of the Office of the Political Ombudsman? You know, I'm so energized and encouraged and inspired by Jamaica's young people. They are still filled with enthusiasm for Jamaica and for the future. They want to know and they want to be engaged. So. The way PARI came about, actually, is that once I took office, I started doing something called Conversations with Young Jamaicans. And I visited a number of schools across the country and colleges and had a discussion for about two, three hours with the student body and asked a number of questions. They asked questions. They did questionnaires and so on. And they kept saying, we want to be involved. We want to do more. How can we help? How can we know more? And it is out of this that PARI was born, which is really made up of a lot of youth leaders uh, in the tertiary education in high schools and some who are working young people. So they feel that the office represents something good about Jamaica and that it's important to have an entity that can hold politicians to account and through which their voices can be heard. And so I feel very energized and humbled by their enthusiasm for the work we do. Heartening indeed. We are speaking with the Honorable Donna Parchment Brown from the Office of the Political Ombudsman. Thank you so much for joining us on Mellow TV today. It was my absolute pleasure. And again, to your viewers here and abroad, we are here for you. We work for you. And my door, I would love to hear from you. Any comments, uh, we can go onto the Political Ombudsman's website to find the report. And I look forward to a lot of feedback on it. Thank you so much. We are now joined by Mr. David Salmon of PARI, that is the youth arm of the Office of the Political Ombudsman. Mr. Salmon, welcome to Mellow TV. And I'm very happy to be here. And we are happy to have you indeed. What does the acronym PARI stand for? All right, so PARI stands for the Political Awareness and Respect Initiative. And this is the youth arm of the Office of the Political Ombudsman. The objective of PARI is to increase engagement with young people, with the office, as well as to facilitate the processes of uh, good democracy and good governance. Talk to us about the role of the stakeholder group PARI in the review. All right, so PARI played a very critical review in the campaign review. So it uh, 
serves as one of the stakeholder groups that were engaged in the process and the PARI has been involved from the beginning. So several of the recommendations that were noted were actually made by PARI members. So for example, the introduction of a sort of bond that will be used for persons to, to clean up the political paraphernalia. That is a direct recommendation from PARI. So PARI essentially serves as an avenue where ideas can be developed and formulated that can advance the interest of the political ombudsman's office. Thank you for sharing and enlightening us a little bit more about the group. Could you define PARI a little bit more for us in terms of the main objectives of the organization? Yes. All right. So primarily the, the first main objective is to increase awareness of the political ombudsman as well as the, the mandate of the office. So PARI is comprised of different youth leaders and young persons who are interested in the work of the office and want to learn more about the office. However, it also has a certain other secondary roles. So for example, it increases the awareness of democracy. It increases awareness of good ideal practices in a young democracy like Jamaica. So last year, for instance, we held a conference in August where we had members of the Commonwealth Secretariat being present as well as academia, and they could discuss the whole issue of democracy, Jamaica's political history. This continued into this year where we were looking at uh, rights that were taking place as well, and also encouraging young persons to have certain important skills that are needed. So PARI mainly serves a role to raise awareness of the office, but it is also an institution that facilitates for the sharing of ideas, for knowledge, and for young persons to learn more about good governance. Why is it important for young people to become politically aware? All right, so being politically aware is at the heart of a functioning thriving democracy because it is important for young people to be aware in order to keep elected officials accountable. Secondly, it is also important so that young people are familiar with the role and functions of government. So for example, many young persons would not know that your parish councillor plays a very important role and is really responsible for the maintenance of roads and not necessarily a member of parliament. Additionally, many young persons may not necessarily be aware that each member of parliament is given $20 million for their constituency development fund to serve the interests of constituents. So being aware and knowledgeable about this process is of fundamental importance so that persons can keep their elected officials accountable as well as look at which stakeholders are responsible for the business of governance and for the well-being of constituents. How do we get more young people involved in the process? All right, so in order to get more young people involved, we have to connect the respective stakeholders and actors with young people. So for example, the office has done a very good job in reaching out to different stakeholders and getting them involved. This provides a template for how we can get more young people involved in the process. So for example, increasing the awareness of public and civic education, which is a major recommendation made in the report. Additionally, facilitating appropriate consultation uh, consultations which would allow for the input of young people to be involved in the process to, so you can get feedback from them which was clearly seen in the report that's another way to get young people involved so we're looking at different ladders of participation so it's not only for example having persons being present at sessions but really having them play a very important role raising their voice on, on important issues and really taking the recommendations of young people and those are just a few ways so we can get young people involved Thank you so much. Are you on social media? Uh, personally, yeah, yes, yes, I am, but as well as PARI as well, because you see, PARI is really managed by young people. Yes. And thus, we take an innovative approach to being involved in young people. So as I raised earlier, I'm personally on social media, PARI is on social media, because PARI serves as a tool so we can reach out to respective persons. So you can find out about PARI by checking the Office of the Political Ombudsman via their Instagram account, via the website. And thus, we, we have different routes. You can look at, for example, if you know a PARI member, you can get involved through there. So there are different avenues you can reach out to PARI. Thank you for sharing and thank you, Mr. Salmon, for joining us on Mellow TV. And, and thank you very much for having me. It was a very good experience. Same here. This has been another Mellow TV special. I am Shelly Hill. Until next time, stay safe.